What a day we had. We had rain, we had thunderstorms, and yes, even rainbows coming out. I guess depends on which team you're rooting for in the Subway series, but maybe that's luck for you. See how there's a little notch here? This looks like you're kind of pushing in on this storm. That's inflow. That's where we would see that center of rotation. So South Huntington, this is about to move in. This is moving right to the north of the Long Island Expressway. Thankfully, there were no injuries reported. The tree ended up going into the garage. I think it's a great reminder that we don't need severe warnings to have to be concerned about wind damage. Now, right now, I know people watching either live in Florida, maybe your second home is in Florida, maybe you go back and forth, you have family. Right now, because we're still very far out, I want to stress that we are still uncertain about the track, but what is certain is you need to be prepared. Then as we go into the evening, we start to get a pull from Lake Michigan of their moisture. That feeding into Lake Erie, and you can see those bands more intense and shifting into downtown Cleveland and parts of Cuyahoga County. That's why the worst for you looks to be Monday night into Tuesday with the current tracking of this system. As the temperatures start to warm up in the coming days, you don't want to walk underneath icicles because as those temperatures warm, these are going to start to melt and a lot of times they can fall down and become a very dangerous situation. So just something to keep in the back of your mind. And it's gorgeous because the humidity is finally gone, right? Yeah, that was, was pretty bad, especially <laughs> yesterday afternoon. I mean, it's good for the skin, but not for the hair. <laughs> All right, looking on the bright side. And we are at the Hudson Valley Hot Air Balloon Festival. It's the 31st year, and you can enjoy it not just on the ground, but also hundreds of feet up. One of the things that I want to share with you that I did learn today, in case you didn't know, is that you have to look at the weather not just at the surface, but also up in the air. The data that we get back from the satellite is going to be life-changing. It's going to help us as meteorologists down the road save your life. There's been a lot of conversation about how an increase in ocean temperatures as a result of climate change are bringing more of these predators to our region. But since a lot of shark species survive best in deep, cold water, New York State's top shark expert says it's more likely they're hanging out here for the food supply. And as we move forward, we're going to start to see some more clouds roll in, a very interesting pattern setting up as we go into the week. We'll see a mild mix on Tuesday, so what that means is we'll see mostly cloudy skies, then a little bit of sun, then some clouds, and then sun. And as we move forward to the second half of the week, those chances of showers will increase, although I'm going to leave a very minimal chance of rain in your forecast as we go into Tuesday afternoon. Let's take a look at what you can expect as we move forward hour by hour. You'll notice little bits of green here and there. Now that's just indicating those very small chances. Better chances will be for Long Island and in the northern Hudson Valley, but across the five boroughs as we go into Tuesday morning, you'll still see those chances. Again, don't be surprised if you wake up in your one spot that has a little bit of some sprinkles on your car. And then as we go into the morning commute, the morning run, mostly cloudy skies. Again, we will see some peaks of sun here and there, but the hour by hour going into tonight, we will stay mild. A little bit of a peak in humidity, but nothing crazy. Don't worry about that. And then those mostly cloudy cloudy skies hold as we go overnight. As we take a look at the forecast, breaking it down hour by hour, we'll see those clouds roll in, and then we will stay mostly cloudy to cloudy overnight into the rush hour on Tuesday morning. Rain chances very minimal. That's why I'm leaving 20% in there. Most of us, though, will stay dry as we go into your Tuesday forecast. Wednesday right now, that's actually looking to be our day that's going to be the most sun and the driest conditions. Now, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, our next storm system starts to roll in. I'll be watching that very closely for us. There also could be a chance of some rumbles of thunder. So very active pattern moving back in. But you know what, Anthony? We could certainly use the rain. We could. Certainly summer-like. Uh, yes, very. Forecast. <laughs> Meredith, thanks. For the past 54 years, I've been diving the waters off of Long Island. And while Barry Lipsky has explored the depths below some of the most beautiful areas in the tropics, he says there's nothing more thrilling than searching for the remnants of the past off our coastlines. We have the shipwrecks that nobody else has, and the diving in the Northeast, especially the Long Island, is an adventure. Mesmerizing sights that are only the prelude to stories that began up to centuries ago, brought to life through the eyes of divers miles beneath the surface. All of a sudden you see this huge structure underwater that's coming out of the abyss and it's in the middle of this big sandy area where there's nothing else except for this shipwreck and you know you're 
about to come and be part of history. But while Mother Nature naturally erodes away these ancient relics, our changing climate is contributing to speeding up the process. You can look at a ship that you've been diving on for the last 30, 40 years. All of a sudden, like after Hurricane Sandy, for example, the Stolt, we went down there and the, the whole thing has opened up now. The USS San Diego, same thing. It's deteriorating, but it's also been affected by these intense storms. Powerful wind and waves from Sandy washed ashore here on Fire Island, what's thought to be parts of the Bessie White. A Canadian coal schooner that ran aground a mile west of Smith's Point a hundred years ago. This is just one of more than 7,000 shipwrecks across the Northeast that could be disappearing before our eyes faster than ever before. Research scientists like Stony Brook University Associate Professor Kevin Reed says the evidence is clear through a combination of an increase in sea level and more extreme weather events. As the climate's changing, our coastline is shifting, and as the storms become stronger, they're really battering everything on the coast, including shipwrecks. But it's not just the mixing taking place beneath the surface and powerful waves generated by these storm systems battering what's left of these monumental vessels. The change in the environment of the water is also a contributing factor. We're warming them, maybe there's more pollutants that are happening. This can impact the ecosystems that are surviving or living around those shipwrecks. Resulting in an alteration of sea life in our coastal waters and contributing to entombing these memoirs even deeper into the ground. As the wreck deteriorates, it just goes further and further into the sand until it is no longer visible. Just one example of the many ways our changing climate is impacting the place we call home. On Long Island, Meredith Garfalo, News 12. Thank you guys so much. Yes, <laughs> we appreciate it.